Welcome back guys. So today it's my pleasure to share with you the Metal Storm Collector's Edition from Retrobit. This is an awesome NES game that was originally released in 1991. It was later released on the Famicom in Japan in 1992. Kind of strange, right? It's an IRAM game and it was released in the US first. That was kind of unheard of back in the day. And the cool thing with this release right here is that they didn't just re-release the US version. They actually gave us the Japanese version, but they actually took it a step further than that. It's English translated. So there was a lot of differences between the two. We'll get into that a little bit more in a moment. Let's just get into the uh, the, the meat of the meat and potatoes here. We gotta, we gotta check this out. Let's open it up. The box just looks so damn great. It's like, I wanna, I wanna keep it sealed, but you know, video games are meant to be played and that's what we're gonna be doing. So here she is. Nice little uh, embossed, like shiny, slick little slip case. It's pretty good stuff. The uh, the box inside, it's got like some foil embossing, some shininess. Looks very slick. I actually want to be very careful. You guys know I'm usually rough with this stuff, but this one, my God, Retrobit's been up in their game with these releases. So this edition, it's I believe $69.99. Available on castlemaniagames.com and a few other places. I'll have links in the description. Um, but to give you guys a heads up, yeah, Retrobit sent this to me early. I was actually part of their like playtester group, a very small group of people who uh, playtested the prototype of this to make sure everything was good. As like I said, it wasn't just boom, let's, you know, we got the ROM, let's put it on a cartridge type thing. It was updated to English, Japanese version, very interesting stuff. Still have my prototype cart there. Had a lot of fun with this. But let's go ahead and see what else we have in here. So um, this edition, from what I understand, there is only being released 3,000 um, of the collector's edition and the, the different colors that they have. So uh, in different regions, different distributors or retailers, they have different colors. There's a metallic silver, a galactic blue, and a transparent blue. I believe this is going to be the... Uh, the galactic blue, maybe? We'll find out. I'm not 100%, but it's all retailer specific. But there is that. Um, there is a standard edition that's available as well. Um, that There's 2,000 of them. Uh, so these are going to be shipping pretty soon from what I understand because it is now December. Oh, look at that big-ass pin. <laughs> that's a hefty-ass pin. Before I recorded this, I put this box on the scale because I was like, I got to find out how much this weighs because it was pretty damn hefty. Um, and it was about two pounds, just slightly under two pounds. One of the biggest things, the cool things, is you get this the M308 Gunner figure. That is really nice. Nice little box. Dang, they like <laughs> they went all out with this release. Can't wait to see the other stuff they do. I know they've been teasing things uh, through CES and whatnot, and different you know uh, little places they've gone. Man, I, I you know what I'm. I got to leave him in the box. That looks really nice. I don't want to, because this has kind of like a matte, like a satin finish. And I'm, I'm worried that if I peel that sticker, it's going to rip it. I'll just keep it in the box for now. But that is really nice. Cool little figure. Um, oh, man. Let me see. Is there any way to open it from the bottom? You know what? I'm just going to cut it. We got to get it out of the box. Just man up and open it. Stop being a wuss. Just open the damn thing. I'll put it back in the box for display purposes later. Oh, there. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, ha I had to take this out. You guys have to see. There he is. Metal Storm. Really awesome. Get that, like, PVC plastic smell wafting in my nostrils. <laughs> Very nice. M308. Little thing there. Neat little figure. It's on the bottom here. Come on, box. Retrobit, Irem, Irem Software Engineering. That is cool. That is really slick. Nice little figure. I know a lot of people are into those kind of things. Let's get them, get them back in there without, without jacking them up. All right, I'll fix that later. I'll fix that later. We got to see what, what, what else to do in here. All right, so that's, that's the contents of the box. There was a little bonus uh, black tissue paper there. Use it for whatever you want. Oh, man, dude, look at that. Oh my God. I know I've seen like, you know, their, their, uh, press release images and whatnot, but I have not seen any of this packaging in you know, person that is 
freaking awesome. <laughs> that is cool. Galactic blue. Okay, so it says the uh, the color on the back. That's nice. That is nice. We get a little envelope. A little envelope action here. Boom. There's that. Metal Storm. Collector's Edition. This, like, out of all their releases, this is the one that I'm, like, super excited for. Holy Diver 2. That one was awesome. I think I think they might have some of those back in stock on uh what you call it, Castlemania Games. And here's the certificate of authenticity. I'm number 272 of 3000 Galactic Blue. That nice little uh this nice little card stock here. That's cool. The little postcard type things. I mean not really postcards, just prints, but they got that that foil gold foil leafing on the back. That's that's nice. <laughs> these guys, man, they're they're putting an effort in these releases. They're putting some nice ass packages together for a reasonable price. Holy crap! I know I've talked uh, about other companies re-releasing games, and they'll re-release games that are like three dollars on eBay, and they'll charge like a hundred dollars for the cartridge. These guys aren't about that. They're releasing rare stuff and awesome packages for a reasonable price. In my opinion, we just got to open this up. I have like. A collection of boxed NES games, not very many. Um, I want to keep this nice to put it with them. Put this in a nice, like, protective. Uh, ah, always, man, always. Ah, oh, man, be careful if you open it if you don't want to do what I just did. That's all right, though. Oh, what else do we got in here? It's a little foam insert at the bottom. Very, very good. A little attention to detail there. Holy crap, we got a poster. We got a big ass poster. I'm probably going to unfold and not be able to put back together. Oh, it's two sided too. I think I looked at the uh, image of this in the press release. And I was like, oh, that's cool. There is that. Can't really get it all in frame, but Japanese. This is going to be a. Uh... Oh, very nice. There's that. I'll put like the image up for those just so you can see what the actual full thing is, but that's cool. Nice little poster. Manual. A game instruction manual. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I, that is, that is cool. Special thanks to, I'm listed right there. You see that mad little pixel? That is freaking awesome, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. I appreciate that a ton. That is freaking awesome. Have my name in a freaking manual for an awesome ass game. Oh my God. And on the first page, they didn't even have to do that, man. That is, that is freaking, that is freaking dope. Oh, that is awesome. Wait, do they have like, is it listed in Japanese too? The manual instructions? So there we go. So from what I understand, this game, it runs fine on original hardware, most clone consoles as well including obviously all of RetroBits clone consoles. Um, as of the recording of this video, it does not work on the Retron 5. Uh, the Retron 5 is an emulation machine. So I know RetroBit has uh, reached out to them. You know, they are a competitor, but they've reached out to them like, hey, can you guys uh, do something with your firmware maybe? And, you know, so people who have your product can enjoy this game on there as well. Uh, so we'll have to see if they they wind up uh, patching that in, but that's cool. You got Japanese and English uh, in the manual. That is really awesome. Nice manual. So one thing I miss from video games is manuals. So yeah, if you if if you want to get this to play on the Retron Five, just uh, understand that right now it does not work. I've I haven't tested this uh, this cart because obviously I just opened it, but I did test the um, prototype on the Retron that did not work. But there is that really nice cartridge, galactic blue, shiny ass label, metal storm, boom, retro bit, published by retro bit. You have the gunner on the back there. That that's a nice, nice cartridge. Um, so I know a lot of people will ask, especially with these, you know, these uh reproductions or you know, re-releases, since they're not, you know, licensed through Nintendo and Nintendo's not doing the manufacturing. Uh, these are done in five volt. So they are safe for, you know, all of our machines out there, original hardware and whatnot. So that is a good thing. Um, some of the differences in this game compared to, uh, you know, how it was the U.S. version 
comparing to the Japanese version. Like I said, the, they were released, uh, you know, crazily enough. The Japanese one came out later. Uh, but in the U.S. version, there was no introduction story or opening credits. And the final boss has nothing to say during the fight. The ending text is more positive and you live to fight another day. In the Japanese version, you had a detailed story and text plays out, followed by a flashy intro uh, cinematic showing the M308 gunner. The boss taunts you during the final battle and takes you with him. The ending text is much darker and serious. Um, so in the Japanese version, the game is a little more difficult. There's some things that are changed, enemy placements and stuff like that. Um, and also one of the big things is between the US version and the Japanese version, the Japanese version, they actually uh, kind of changed some of the palettes, the colors. Um, so they, they rearranged stuff to match the actual artwork of the mech, the gunner, um, and some of the backgrounds, just some of the, the sprites and whatnot. The colors are different. Uh, you know, it's a more vibrant color, brighter. So it does look really cool, the Japanese version. The Japanese version, um, in some of the stages, there's gonna be differences, like stage six has electric fields and enemies. Uh, can be tougher in other areas. So there's a lot of little differences. And the cool thing is, is this is the Japanese release, but translated into English. So I think that is really awesome stuff. Um, I was glad to be part of the little play tester group. You know, obviously I have nothing really to do with this game, but being part of a little group to test and, uh, you know, I tested out on a bunch of different consoles and played through the game multiple times. Um, and I really dug it. So I'm real happy to have the final release version in my possession really dope so if you want to check this out links will be in the description uh, for all the places you can grab this the different versions uh, the standard or collector's edition i still think this collector's edition and this packaging geez like any other company man they'd be charging like double <laughs> this ain't no lion king for a hundred dollars guys so hey really do appreciate y'all you mean the world to me really do and with that said i will catch y'all next time peace out bye bye and boom bye Thumbs up.